In 2020, Grace Swain was hired at Josh's Frogs to manage their Amazon account. Part of her responsibilities included optimizing product descriptions. When she reached a product called Hermit Crab Salt, she was confused. Growing up, Her friend had hermit crabs, and they were always kept in a little critter keeper with pebbles, and they never lasted long. Why did they need salt? With a little research, Grace found Crab Street Journal's care information and Mary's breeding project. Suddenly, hermit crabs didn't seem like boring pets anymore. After setting up a tank, She found a few hermit crabs on Facebook Marketplace for adoption. Her adopted colony quickly grew as she realized how many were being bought as impulse pets and no longer wanted. Armed with this new knowledge, Grace encouraged Josh's frogs to update their care information and products to modern standards. As well, She introduced Josh's frogs to Mary's captive breeding program. She is so excited for the captive bred babies they have and how they've allowed us to spread awareness to even more people. And I am especially grateful. Please welcome Grace Swain. Hi, my name is Grace. I work with Josh's Frogs. I work in the marketing department, but I also write content for hermit crabs here. For the crab con talk today, I wanted to go over what it takes to set up a bioactive hermit crab habitat. There are three parts to a bioactive tank. The substrate, plants, and the cleanup crew. So the first part of setting up a bioactive hermit crab habitat is the substrate. I know the most common substrate for hermit crabs is the 5 to 1 ratio with play sand and cocoa fiber. However, after testing we found that that was often too dry for most plants and the plants would not do as well in that soil. So we came up with Josh's Frog's Hermit Crab Bio Bedding. Josh's Frog's Hermit Crab Bio Bedding is a unique blend of ingredients made to jumpstart the bioactive environment. It's made of quickcrete play sand, leaf compost, coral pieces, cocoa fiber, peat moss, fine sphagnum moss, and trace elements and minerals. It helps maintain a proper level of humidity, uh, facilitate burrowing, and support a community of cleaner invertebrates and beneficial organisms. There have been some concerns about using peat moss with hermit crabs. This is mainly due to its acidity. Peat moss is very acidic. It's between a 3 and a 4.5 on the pH scale. And um, since hermit crabs do burrow and molt in the substrate, they become very soft during this time and the acidity of peat moss can hurt their soft exoskeleton. However, in Josh's Frog's Hermit Crab Bio Bedding, it's a very small part of the substrate and we have tested the pH. The peat moss does not affect the overall pH of the substrate. Uh, We measured the pH to be between 5.5 and 6.1, which is similar to the 5 to 1 play sand and cocoa fiber mix. While not suitable as a sole substrate for hermit crabs, we have not found peat moss to, in a small amount to affect the molting of hermit crabs in our biobedding hermit crab substrate. If you are wanting to start a bioactive tank, but you already have your current tank all set up and you don't want to remove soil since your hermit crabs might already be molting in it, or you have a large tank and that would just be a ton of effort moving that sand, something that we saw during product testing and I have done myself is just using the hermit crab bio bedding as a top layer on top of your existing substrate. Since everything that will benefit from the bio bedding is on the top layer of the soil, it is an easier way to convert your existing tank into a bioactive tank for your hermit crabs. If you want to try this method on a tank that has hermit crabs under, 
Only add small layers of new substrate over several weeks to avoid tunnel collapse. The next part of making a bioactive hermit crab tank would be the plants. Um, plants in a vivarium help carry moisture from the lower portions of the tank to the airspace of the vivarium. As you know, humidity and moisture are very important for hermit crabs. Plants also create oxygen and help break down waste in the tank. They provide hiding places, enrichment, and help bring an overall natural feel to the tank. So some of the plants we have in here, you'll see our spider plant, a bromeliad, a small air plant, a larger air plant, and up front is a cryptanthus. I wanted to mention some planting tips. The air plants do not have roots and they are fine to be set on pieces of wood or mounted on the background of your tank higher up in the terrarium. They do not need to be in the soil. The cryptanthus up front here has a very shallow root system, so it is safe to plant directly into the soil because the roots will not take over the tank and take away from molting space from your crabs. The bromeliad up here will grow small roots and like the air plant, it can be mounted on wood, mounted on the background, and it could also be placed in the soil since it does have small roots. It won't take over the substrate. And the final plant in the kit is a spider plant. And spider plants can get quite large. So when you're planting your spider plant, uh, I would recommend planting it in a pot that doesn't have any holes. That will contain the roots and keep it from taking over your vivarium and taking away from molting space from your crabs. So what you do once you've uh, rinsed all the soil off the plant is you would fill the pot halfway up with the substrate and then put the plant in and then finish filling it with the substrate. And then it'll be ready to plant in your vivarium. You can either put the pot on top of the soil or you can bury the pot into the soil if you don't want to see it, but that will help keep the roots contained. On occasion, the plants in your crab habitat will need to be watered. For plants planted directly in the substrate, you can gently water them in place when they look like they might be getting crispy. Um, that's better than removing them from the substrate in case that would cause a tunnel to collapse. For plants like bromeliads, only their cups need to be watered. So gently fill the cups of the bromeliad with water. For plants like air plants, they're usually removable and they can be floated in your freshwater pool on occasion. If your freshwater pool is not deep enough for your air plant, the air plant can be removed from the habitat and soaked in a cup with dechlorinated water. It is important not to overwater them because overwatering can lead to flooded substrate, which is not good for your hermit crabs. These plants are great for hermit crab tanks because they can grow in the sandy soil that hermit crabs live in. These plants are very tolerant of the extreme humidity and heat, and they are also non-toxic. When choosing plants for your hermit crab tank, it's very, very important that they are non-toxic. Hermit crabs do like to eat plants, but plants are part of the hermit crab's natural environment, so they will love the plants even if they murder them. To help the plants grow and to maintain the hermit crab's day and night cycle, you'll want some sort of LED lighting. It also doesn't produce a lot of heat, so it won't overheat your hermit crab terrarium. Another thing to be careful of when choosing plants for your bioactive tank is what fertilizers might be used on them. Because hermit, since hermit crabs may eat your plants, you don't want to have any toxic pesticides or fertilizers on them. We use a number of OMRI listed pesticides and other natural methods along with a very limited number of synthetic pesticides. However, when they are sold, there isn't any active ingredient of pesticide on the plants, and it's important to make sure that the plants are rinsed off, both the leaves and the roots, and it will take away any residue from the plants, and then they will be safe to use in a vivarium right away. My favorite part about a bioactive terrarium for hermit crabs is the cleanup crew. The cleanup crew helps minimize work on your part and helps keep the tank looking clean. The first part of the cleanup crew are springtails. 
Springtails are small insects that thrive on mold and fungus. And as you may know about hermit crab tanks, the stagnant air from the glass lids, the high humidity, high heat is a perfect place for mold to grow. It's really common if you use like, uh, especially like, I think they're called like lizard loungers. They're like little hammocks. Those grow mold often. And sometimes even if you put in new decorations that are slightly porous, they may grow mold as well. So springtails, um, they eat mold and keep it to a minimum and that, that makes a safer place for your hermit crabs to live. My favorite part about the cleanup crew in a bioactive tank is isopods. These are actually crustaceans, they are not insects, and they will eat all the large pieces of waste in your hermit crab vivarium. So any hermit crab droppings or pieces of food your hermit crabs have drug off and forgotten about, the isopods will eat it and help keep the tank cleaner. Isopods also aerate the soil. They make nutrients more available to plants that grow in the substrate. They also act as a supplemental food source. So if a isopod dies or if your hermit crab manages to catch a live isopod, your hermit crabs can eat it and they're actually a really great food source. Some types of isopods can also eat mite eggs. Food mites can be really common in hermit crab terrariums just because of how all food can be left out in dishes, it can attract mites, and isopods can help combat mites. While they won't eat the mites directly, they can eat the eggs and eat extra food, keeping the tank cleaner and keeping mites from having additional food sources. However, not all types of isopods work in hermit crab terrariums. Some are definitely better than others. Some of the isopods that we have found work best in hermit crab terrariums are and I'm sorry, I can't pronounce the scientific names, but this one's called Ukrainian Pied. It's a pretty black and white one. The curly wood louse, which is gray. Um, one of my favorites, the Cubaris marina papaya. They're kind of pink. And similar to that is the Cubaris marina little sea isopods. Um, these are very similar to the papaya, but they are also gray. And the ones I use in my hermit crab terrariums at home are the powder orange isopods. We only have the orange ones here today, but they also come in blue and black and white and solid white. And then there's also the dwarf white isopods, which would be the smallest you could have in your terrarium. If you aren't sure which isopod is right for you, here's a little bit more information about them. The Ukrainian pied and curly isopods are from the same family. They are hardy and established easily. They breed faster than the little sea and papaya isopods, but not quite as fast as the powder isopods. They're mid-size and they make a great cleanup crew and pet and are great for bioactive setups. And something unique about them is that they can only partially roll up into a C shape and they're unable to tuck their tail or antenna into their shell. The little sea and papaya isopods are also mid-sized, but they reproduce rather slowly. Um, they also roll up into balls, and their shell is a bit softer than other isopods that can do this, making them good snacks. They can live in temperatures between 60 and 85 degrees, and also in 60 to 80 percent humidity. One of these isopods can live for two to three years. The powder orange, powder blue, Oreo crumble, and white isopods are another hardy species of isopod that produce very quickly once established. They are smaller than the other isopods, but they are more active and easily seen. They're actually super fast and can be seen running around the floor of your enclosure day and night. They are soft-bodied and unlikely to bother other inhabitants. They do best in temperatures of 70 to 85 degrees and 60 to 85 percent humidity. The isopods can live for up to two years. The last species of the isopods we recommend for hermit crab enclosures are the dwarf tropical white isopods. They are considered a very hardy isopod, almost indestructible. They can live in any temperature or humidity that you're keeping another animal in. They produce very quickly once established because they are parthenogenic, which means all of them are female. However, they are the smallest isopod on the list, measuring under 0.5 centimeters, which is not even a quarter of an inch. 
The reason that some isopods work and other ones do not is based on their burrowing habits and their diet. Some people's favorite isopod when they see it is the dairy cow isopod and we do not recommend any of those isopods from that family because they are very protein driven. Protein is a very high part of their diet and when hermit crabs are molting, especially if it's a surface molt, there is a chance that the dairy cow isopod could eat your hermit crabs. Due to their nature, we do not recommend them at all for hermit crab vivariums. So these are our, what we think are the best choices for your hermit crab habitat. So those are the three important aspects of setting up a bioactive hermit crab habitat and this may not be for everybody. It is additional work to make sure that the plants are not buried or knocked over and that they're properly watered without overwatering your substrate. It is an extra level of care that may be for later in your hermit crab journey. If you're just starting out, bioactive might not be the right way to go for you. But if you've had hermit crabs a while, you understand the consistency of how, the, how moist the substrate should be and hermit crabs' additional needs. And you want to, do, you want to decorate your herm, hermit crab habitat naturally and you want to go to that next step. Bioactive is a great choice for keeping your hermit crab habitat natural and clean. Thank you so much for coming to CrabCon 2022 and I hope you enjoy the rest of the presentations. <laughs>